Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Today I'm going to do a short tutorial on my Flashback Friday trifold pocket card. It was requested from one of my blog subscribers. So Patricia, this one's for you. We're going to start off with a 12 by 12 piece of Recollections cardstock. This is 65 pounds. That'll be for the card base. For our mat, we're going to use some rose gold foil cardstock paper, also from Recollections and Michaels. I thought I would uh, use some pattern paper. This is uh, eight by eight. I'm not sure what brand this is. I got this from a family member who is cleaning out her stash. So we're gonna use that. Of course, we're gonna need some ribbon. So I have Robert from the Robert Stanley collection, eighth inch ribbon in white. We'll need scissors, score tape, and I have a couple of embellishments that I've already mixed up. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll bring in our 12 by 12 cardstock. And I have my Tim Holtz and Onyx Studios rotary paper trimmer. This thing is fantastic. We need for the card base a piece that is six inches by 12 inches. So we will cut that in half. And now we're going to do our scoring. I have a Martha Stewart 12 by 12 scoreboard. Um, I don't think you can get this anymore. I will link to a comparable board like this. Um, let me look at my notes. We're going to score at three and a half. Three and a half. I like to score at least twice. Uh, we're going to score at seven and a half. And then we're going to score at 10 and a half. Okay. Now we'll just go ahead and fold on these score lines. Okay. And now we're all done with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at our sample here real quick. We have a ribbon closure on it that we'll get to in a little bit. And we have a little pull out and this little centerpiece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the pattern paper on the front. And since it's such a light pattern, I'm going to use it on these two pieces as well. If you wanted to, you could certainly add pattern paper and or mats to any of the areas on here. So for now, let's go ahead and work on this little pocket. So you can either use tape, tape runner, or liquid adhesive. Either, either or will work. We're just going to go ahead and Put a little line of tape right here on the end. Okay. And then we will take the paper off. And then just fold it over. And there we have our little pocket. Okay. Easy peasy there. All right, so we have that done. Let's go ahead and cut our mats. 
So we'll bring this in. And I will bring in my eight and a half inch Tim Holtz tonic guillotine trimmer. Another wonderful tool. Um, so for the front cover, we're going to need a mat that is three and let me see, check my notes, three and a quarter inches wide. So we'll go ahead and line that up. <clears throat> We'll cut that. For the inside center portion, we need a mat that is three and three quarters inches wide. So we will line that up and get that cut. And I do apologize for the glare, that beautiful paper. And then for the inside pocket insert, we need a piece that is two and seven eighths. So let's see, it's two, four, six, almost three inches. We'll get lined up, and then we have a little bit of a scrap here. They all need to be three and, or I'm sorry, five and three quarters inches tall. All right, and since we have our trimmer out, let's go ahead and cut our pattern paper. Uh, because this is eight by eight, we are gonna need two pieces of it. So the first piece needs to be, for the front cover, three inches wide. For the inside, we need three and a half inches wide. And for the inside piece, we need two and five eighths. We will get that lined up. And let's see, this piece needs to be five inches tall. Nope, that is not right. That is too short. Okay. So my notes are wrong. So two and five eighths inches wide. We'll cut another piece here. And because the mat, <clears throat> excuse me, the mat is five and three quarters, so this needs to be five and a half. Five. Okay. Yeah, so that'll line up fine. Yeah, well, they all need to be five and a half inches tall. So go ahead and get these cut down. We'll get them matched up with their mats. Okay. All right, so there we go. The front cover, the inside center and the piece for our little pocket insert. So let's go ahead and get this one done real quick. Since we're just going to, I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna use some quarter inch score tape for that. Uh, this was eighth inch score tape, by the way. Make sure I'm in frame here. Okay. 
and I'll just go ahead and speed through this part. Okay, so we have all of our tape on here. We'll just burnish that down with our fingers because I can't find my bone folder. <clears throat> I think I probably put it someplace safe and that's never a good thing. So we'll go ahead and get this down. And again, anything that's a little repetitive, I'll just go ahead and speed through that. Okay, there we go. So this portion here, our little tuck spot, is completely finished. No, it's not. Why won't you fit in there? I had a little error there. Um, I don't know if it was uh, in my typing when I typed up the directions for myself, or if the directions are wrong on the blog. I will definitely double check that. Um, so. Our insert piece, this is wrong. Our insert piece needs to be five and a quarter inches tall, the mat, by two and seven eighths inches wide. <clears throat> Excuse me. And our pattern paper piece needs to be five inches tall by two and five eighths inches wide. And then it will fit perfectly inside. So there's that. So we'll tuck this over here out of the way. Uh, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I did this little knot right here. Um, it's really actually kind of cool. Uh, so this is going to go in here. So let's go ahead and get a length of ribbon. Got a little piece of tape on there. We'll just cut that off. Uh, when working with ribbon, you really need a nice pair of sharp scissors. So let's go ahead and kind of measure this. We're going to wrap it around. I don't know. I've got plenty. So we'll just take it around that many times. Get as much as you think you need. Uh, now we're going to bring in our We Are Memory Keepers. I don't remember what this thing is called. Um, I'll look it up and I'll put it up on the screen. Um, we have an hole punches on the side. And we're just going to use the eighth inch hole punch. And we're going to just kind of center this a little bit. Well, as well as possible. And then we'll go ahead and punch our hole. Now, let me definitely get my directions here. So we have the hole where we want it and it's not centered, of course. So we're gonna thread our ribbon from the back to the front, just like that. And we're going to leave enough here for the knot and for however long we want the tail. And then we're going to take the ribbon back here, wrap it around to the front and to the back again. And then we're going to go back up through the hole to the front. And then we will get this nice and snug. 
and then we'll just go ahead and tie our knot. Maybe we'll tie our knot. <laughs> there we go. We'll just do that nice and snug. And then take our scissors, cut at an angle. And this, this can be as long as you want. Um, you can go ahead and make a bow if you like. And there you go. Cute little knot. So now we'll go ahead and put this in the center of our card. Now I really like this type of a knot. It is not obtrusive in any way. It's very flat. For me, it's easy. And the easier, the better in some situations. It's not going to come untied, which is always a concern of mine. And just to make sure, I'm going to put an extra little piece of tape over the top of that. And then we will just center it in the middle of our card here. Pardon my head. Okay. So there we go with that piece. Now we're going to work on the ribbon closure. You could have a ribbon closure if you want. You could make a belly band if you prefer that either or. So again, we're going to need a length of ribbon. And again, it all depends on how long you think you need. Um, I like to cut things a lot longer than I actually need and then trim them down later. It just works out easier for me. Go ahead and do that. And let's see, I need my eighth inch ribbon back. So we'll go ahead and pick the center. I'm, I'm never really too particular about this. And then we'll take it almost to the end. We'll see approximately how much we need to wrap over. We'll go ahead and take our paper cover off and just line up our ribbon <clears throat> on the tape. And because we have the ribbon on the back, it should be pretty easy to line it up on the front. We'll take it almost to the end. And again, take our tape cover off and just set it down. And there we have that. Now all we need to do is put our front cover on and do a little bit of embellishing. So we'll go ahead and get some score tape on here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of score tape 
across the top of the ribbon closure as well, just to be extra cautious, because it certainly doesn't hurt. Now I don't want to get too close to the end because our mat is about a quarter of an inch smaller than the front of the trifold pocket card. And now we'll just line it up and tape it down and that is the basic basic card what did I do with my insert there she is No, she's just, all right, she's still just a little bit too tall because that's the wrong one. Here we go. That's the one. <laughs> Oi, it's a Monday. <laughs> so we have that. Now all we need to do is embellish the front a little bit. So I have a Tim Holtz tin with a bunch of stuff in here. If I cut some flowers, make some flowers, and I don't know what to do with them, then I'll just pop them in here. And so I decided to use a few things out of there today. I have, here's my notes. Um, these flowers, this small one here, is from Tim Holtz Vault Wildflower Set. And then these two larger flowers are from the Wildflower Stems set number one, I believe. And then with my Nestabilities dies, I cut a while ago a couple of oval shapes out of some vellum paper that I've had in my stash for a long time. So I figured I'd just use these to decorate the front of the card. So I thought I would do, I don't know, a little something like this. And then just put the stems on. Of course, I'll have to cut those down a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started with this top piece. I'm going to open that up like that, keep it a little bit flatter. Now you always want to be careful when you're gluing vellum because I don't care what it says, it's going to show. Um, in some instances, I don't care. In other instances, yeah, it bothers me. Um, but because I'm going to be using these flowers, I'm just going to put a bunch of glue there in the middle. And I'll put it right there. Get that down. I'm going to put this one over here. So I think I'm going to put a little bit of glue here on the side. Maybe just a dot on the bottom. Because I certainly don't want this coming up when it gets put in and taken out of the envelope. So we'll put that there. I know my stems are going to be down here, so maybe a little spot of glue there. And this is art glitter glue uh, that dries clear. I just put it in a, another little container. So we'll put our first stem there. We'll put this one down here. And then we'll put this cute little baby one, maybe like right there. 
think I'm going to trim the stems just a tiny little bit here. All right, let's get these glued down. These flowers were colored with Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Pencils and Distress Inks. I have a blog post up and I will get the link in the description here in the video. So we'll go ahead and put this one here. And then this cute guy will go over here. Oops. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> I did mention it's Monday, right? And we'll put this one here. Get it stuck down before it changes its mind. And then this little cutie is going to go right here. Yep, yeah, right about there. There we go. And we'll just hold this down a little bit. And I can see our vellum's kind of popping up. I might try and put a tiny little touch of glue right where that petal's going to be. And that should hold that little spot down. Okay. I like that. I think that's going to be nice. Um, I tend not to put sentiments on some of my cards, especially if I don't know what I'm going to use them for. Um, this card here, a sentiment would go really nicely just right across here at the stems. Um, I'll just do a tiny little demo here where it might look nice. Of course, you will want to cut this straight. But you could just put a sentiment right there. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. Uh, this would be a really good gift card holder. You could put cash in here, on here. Decorate the inside however you like. And there you go. And then we'll just tie this up. into. We'll, we'll try and make a little bow. I am not a good bow maker. We'll give it a try for you, Patricia. And there we go. Now, if you'd like, trim the tails a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to put a little bit of glue on there so they don't fray. But there we go. That is how I made my Flashback Friday trifold pocket card. I will definitely uh, double check the instructions or the, the measurements, I'm sorry, for the pocket insert to make sure that's correct on the blog. And I will fix it if it's wrong. Um, other than that, thank you so much for joining me today. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next video. Have a great week, you guys. Bye.